Good afternoon, and welcome to my daily chat. This is episode number 543, and it's going to be a little different in a way, because it's reminding you about what I said last week about owning your history, I'll touch on that, but also sharing testimonial, which we're doing the coming again to this, because I got an email from a client this morning, just, I had I had to share it, because it was so inspiring for me, and hopefully it'll inspire you, and also because I have some holiday specials, so this is marketing in a very, like, sideways way so before I jump into that let me introduce myself let me introduce myself in case you haven't seen my broadcast before my name is Barry Selby I'm a best-selling author speaker and relationship attraction expert and I help strong successful women create balance in love life and business and every day for the last almost two years now I do these Facebook live talks yeah Facebook live first then go to YouTube and then I'll tell you about that at the end um, called message for the masculine to inspire your feminine heart and today's episode is number 543 Hi, Jamie. Nice to see my broadcast. And the topic today is a repeat in a way from last week when I talked about, um, yesterday that talk was own your history or history will own you. And I want to share a testimonial because it speaks to this directly and I want to talk more about that. So let me start by saying, um, because I said again, as I said, I received a testimonial this morning um, from a client that just, it touched me deeply. So I'm kind of honored to have received it. I want to share it here. And I'll, put, I'll actually type it into the comments afterwards, but I'll read it out now because you're not able to see the comments so that you can, for yourself, see if this fits up, makes sense to you and it fits for you. So let me read this out and I'll get it on the screen next to me so I'm looking off camera for a second. So um, what she wrote was, your guidance to hold that terrified little girl inside of me. Sorry, excuse me. Let me, let me start again, shall I? <laughs> I'm misreading it. Your guidance to hold that terrified little girl inside me safe has been a huge breakthrough. I had never before linked my relationship behavior to that incident from when I was a little child. As I continue to parent that little girl, I do indeed believe I will have healed this for the last time, just as I intended. I couldn't have gotten there without your guidance and help. Thank you for stepping up to the plate and for making this possible for me. I fully anticipate, in parentheses, being now far more available for love, that love will step through that love will step through toward me with an exquisite depth and grace I've always envisioned. I will keep you posted. Thank you, Barry. So that's the that's the quote. And again, I'll put it in the comments afterwards so you can read it. I'm keeping it anonymous but in you know, respect to the client. But it speaks to the whole point, my it speaks to my point, <laughs> my agenda, my I can say this. <sighs> my um thank you, Jamie. Yes, it was lovely. Um my point because the thing about this is, let me let me let me sidebar this for a second. When I tell people I'm I'm a relationship, well I call myself a relationship attraction expert because I hope it's a relationship coach, they think that I'm some sort of matchmaker or dating coach, and I'm ex- dis- distinctly not that. And this testimony speaks to that because a focus of my work is not just helping you attract what you want; it's also getting rid of the blocks in the way of getting what you want. And that is where you do where there's some. Um, I want to say excavation is the wrong word, but some deeper digging into the past to really shed light on and remove the blocks in the past that got put in a long time ago, so you can be free to love and express and attract what you want. And the testimony will sum it up beautifully. And that's the thing, is that most people have no clue about this stuff, which is why I did that talk last week, which again was called um, Own Your History or History Will Own You, as a blunt, or more blunt, because I've done a few of these now, reminder that until you clear up the past baggage, the past history, the past um, training, that's a new word, I'll try training, then you're going to be in a place where attracting what you want is going to be more challenging. So let me give you a point on this. I'll see if I can come with a different one than I used last time because this is always a, a way of saying it. Say, for example, that you have a vision of being in an amazing relationship with an incredible partner who is loving, respectful, and appreciative, and honoring, and really an amazing lover and everything that you want, which I imagine if you're watching this and you're single, you'd want that. However, if you, like most people, you're not unique on this, were never raised with a experience of love like that, meaning you were raised with a different paradigm of relationship with your parents or relationship between your parents in front of you or relationship with older adults, maybe you were abused or hurt and wounded when you were younger, whatever that was, if it wasn't that example of what you're looking for, it's going to be very hard to put the two together because it's easier for, easier for us to attract what we've already experienced than to attract what we've never experienced before. 
now. You may be saying, well, I've never had a relationship like that before, but I'd like to have it now. Well, here's the thing. If you've had many, many years of past practice of the old paradigm, then it's going to be more of a default, almost like, um, well, I'll use this analogy. If you if you ever walk through a field and you notice, like, for example, where there's a turn, a, a stile climbing over a fence, there's usually some, dr some trodden down grass, like a path either side that's been w walked upon many, many times. They also call them cow paths as well because it's basically it's a furrow in the grass where the where the grass has been trodden down and it's more flat. What's that got to do with anything? You may be thinking. <laughs> Let me to explain. We in our heads <laughs> have these sort of cow paths, meaning that we have default ways of thinking that we learned when we were younger that we use as an adult. So we make assumptions about a lot of things in life based upon how we were raised. And this applies to every area, not just relationships. But the thing we have is, well, the first thing we have is an awareness because for many of us, those cow paths are autopilot. They're running automatically, so we have automatic reactions to being treated nice, to have somebody um, showing us affection, to being received by other people, even to how we're treated financially and how we can receive things in our lives. These um, interactions are governed by how we were raised because those cow paths in our brains, so to speak, are default ways of responding to life. And if you've never had a relationship that was wonderful and exciting and spontaneous and joyful, and you want that, you've got to do some deeper digging to clear out the stuff in the past. Because again, like using that cow path analogy I mentioned, if you could basically fill in that cow path, cow path as all even grass, then you can go wherever you want because you're not restricted. But again, having that, that, that furrow in the grass, that, that, that path built in to, among, between the grass, creating that car path, is the default place you go to. And this is true of life in general, but particularly in relationships, that until we change our course, which is hard to get out of, it's going to be a challenge. So it's like going back into the past and, again, owning your past, owning your history, restoring and repairing those wounds around love that you've been carrying then you can have clarity to move forward without any restrictions. This is the thing. I'm thinking of a better, better analogy than cow path because that was a bit of a reach. <laughs> what you're raised with tends to influence the way you were. I've talked about, I've talked about my own journey before and I'll share this one briefly, quickly. Being raised in a uh, family that didn't argue what is a technique. Jamie, I'll get to that in a second. I'll give you one technique's working with me, but I'll give you something you can take home with you without working with me first. So hang on for that. So what, what I was raised with in, in a family dynamic was a memory that I have that we never argued in family. So I never had arguing as part of my toolkit in relationships. So every relationship I would get into, if an argument showed up, I would leave and quit because I didn't have any tools, any faculty, any comfort with arguments in relationships. Most people don't have the issue. They may have other issues. Maybe they've got their relationship tied to abuse, that whether if they don't have abuse, they don't think they're being loved. Or maybe they're with a partner who has to drink themselves into being loving because that's the way they're raised with their parents. See, these associations are hardwired until you change the wiring. But the good news is they are wired, they're not invisible. So when you do the work to dig those up, to, rev to unfold those, to unpack those, then you can make a difference. So a technique, Jamie, you're saying. So here's, a te here's, a, here's something I start with my clients with, but I'll give you some clues on this one. You have to be clinical about this, as in neutral, not not um, uh, what's the word for not not um, <laughs> not blasé. You've got to be really clinical. So you can look at your past relationships and removing the emotion from it for a second. Do you notice any commonalities of experience? You may have the same experience of how you went on dates and everything else, but I'm talking about the more about the emotional and the energetic and the con and the communication um, commonalities. For example. Um, maybe in your past relationships, maybe you can see three, four, five of them in a row looking back over the last several years where each time your partner had the same way of treating you. Or maybe, if you're an extreme case, maybe you were in the last three relationships you are in, your partner treated on you every time. That's happened for clients before, I know that one. Um, or maybe your client, maybe in um, three different relationships, or four different relationships, your partner... Um, would be so occupied by their work, you'd feel abandoned. 
for example. So first thing is to become aware of what it is that's common to all those relationships. What's the common thread of things that didn't work? Key, didn't work if you want to change it to what does work. Then when you have that understanding and have that recognition of what that is, then you've got to cast your mind back, back in time as it were, and really look back at your past relationships. Sorry, excuse me, look back at your past history when you were younger. Because the thing is, we as human beings in this psychological studies, and, and uh, in fact Bruce Lipton, one of my um, favorite authors, talks about, it, talks about this in his book, The Biology of Belief. We are imprinted by life in the early stages of when we're born. So the first five, six, seven years of life, we are sponges taking the world around us, which means that how we relate to the world and how the world relates to us is learned behavior in the first five years of life. Say, for example, maybe seven years. I'm, I'm, I'm flexible on that end time. What that means is the lessons we learn then, for example, um, say, for example, that in the last three relationships you're in, you look back at the last three, four, five relationships, and your partners were always workaholics or they were always on traveling away or they were doing something else where the common thread was you felt abandoned every single time. Maybe they were drinking all the time. Maybe they were always with their friends and not with you. It's not so much what they did, it's the experience you had. So maybe with the last three, four, five relationships, you felt that you were being abandoned. Go back to your childhood and look at your family dynamics. Maybe your father, or maybe your mother, and maybe a sibling, someone who cared for you, who was close to you, kept leaving on some level. Maybe they're always focused on the television, or maybe they're always at work, or maybe they're workaholic, or maybe they were always out of town or something else happened where they weren't around and you'd feel abandoned. The key is to recognize that there's a thread tying your childhood experience with your parents, one of them or both of them, all the way through to your relationships in the present that's still happening. That is to be the first step, which is basically become aware of that, tie to, that thread tying together. Now, in working with my clients, as I as you know, said from the testimonial, a lot of my work, some, not a lot of work, a part of my work with my clients, especially when they've got history that is unhealed and is causing um, interruptions in their path to where they want to go, is we've got to go back and resolve that. So rewiring and reparenting the child inside is part of that work. And I do I do some techniques on it from my master's program in, in healing of memories and um, parts integration, which brings you back together with yourself. And it's really what happens is, you're kind of running an autopilot now as an adult with some parts of your psyche that are trying to look for certain things to show up. So that abandonment thing I was talking about is that you may be out dating without any simple awareness that you're, you're not even looking for this. Of course, you're not looking for abandonment. You want to find that relationship. But you're on the dating app or you meet someone through a matchmaker or you have to cross paths with somebody in, a, in, a, in the market and you have a connection. You get together with them. You have a great time initially. But I can guarantee you that part of your psyche that's looking for abandonment type people is doing the research. It's the one that's actually like a um, like a bomb detector. It's, a tech, it's detecting somebody who will bring that pattern to you and then you draw them in. So until you change that psyche, that part of your psyche that's doing that bomb detection, you won't be able to change the relationship you attract except by blind luck and faith. And if you want to change it from blind luck and faith to a certainty, that's where you go do the work and resolve your past. I've talked about it so many times because I'm adamant about this. Even myself, I learned this lesson myself personally, that until I made peace with my past and resolved those, those beliefs I was carrying around, I wouldn't be able to go forward in the future. So you like this, right. Um, you use similar, sorry, Jamie was saying, you use a similar approach to how women interact with men in the, in the workplace. Yes, exactly, I agree with you. Because it, it's, it's a paradigm that we learn as a child that applies to everything as an adult. And some of it's to do with business, some it's to do with relationships, it can do with money, it can do with um, physical health even, dietary preferences. You know, there are people who basically are never able to work out because they were working out and exercise because they were trained as kids not to do that for some reason. There's all sorts of different things out there that we're wired when we're younger. But until we go back and undo the wiring, we're going to be having that problem of not being able to change it. So that's why I'm passionate about this and that's why I'm grateful I have a testimony from my client. So I mentioned at the beginning that I do have some specials going on right now, so I'll give you a quick, quick, quick dropping of some hints of that. And by the way, I'm repeating the co comments from particularly, um, oh, Gina, hi. I love how you explain this concept. Thank you, Gina, I appreciate that. So Gina and, Naomi and, um, and Jamie are commenting. So if you're watching this on YouTube, you're wondering what's going on. This is a Facebook Live first, so the comments are appearing on the screen as I'm talking, and then I'm putting it onto YouTube later. So I was repeating the comments, so that way, if you're watching on YouTube, you know what's going on. <laughs> 
So um, before I get to the links of where you can find my YouTube and other broadcasts as well, um, let me just let you know that I do have some holiday specials on my coaching. I hate saying it's so crass marketing and, and stuff but the reality is I do have some private coaching invitations going on that are just for the holidays um, I have a special for one month coaching only because I don't do one month coaching usually I also have coaching opportunity for a single diet single deep dive session as well which is unusual too and I've got one other offer I've got is a very um, a low investment it's basically a four half hour sessions over a month that just for tune up check in and guidance along the way if you want to find out more about those message me directly or I'll put a link in the comments for a discovery session where we can talk and I can tell you what I've got available um, and go from there. So reminders for the Facebook Live and other places it shows up. These Facebook Lives I do every day on my personal page at 5 p.m. Pacific time and then put them out onto my business page on Facebook, which is Barry Selby, the author. I then put it onto my YouTube channel, which is Barry Selby, as is most of all my social media is my name, Barry Selby, and my website is barryselby.com. Um, on my YouTube channel, you can find this and all my 540 previous broadcasts under Messages for the Masculine playlist. And then after that, I'm slowly lo loading up my library. I'm, I'm way behind on this, but I've got to load up my library on my iTunes library, which is my podcast, which is called Messages for the Masculine as well. You can, by the way, subscribe to my YouTube channel and subscribe to my podcast if you wish. And you can download the audios from that and listen to them when you're driving, running around, cycling, whatever you're doing. So that, I think, has given you enough to think about. This is... Um, <laughs> this is the real work you know you can go on dates and do swipes swipe right on these dating apps if you want but if you want to transform your experience of relationship to get what you really want you got to go deeper than that and that's why I don't call myself a coach and I don't call myself a counselor I have a blend of skills that really support you getting what you want healing your past baggage letting go of that um, history so you can actually be free to love the way you truly want so I hope that has been a help to you I appreciate you watching again I'll put the, put the quote in I'll put the testimony in the comments so you can read it as well and uh, your homework, if you wish to, is do what I suggested, which is look at your past history. Look at that thread of what ties your current relationships to your upbringing and see where the commonalities are, because I guarantee you pretty much you're going to have some. If you haven't resolved this before, it's in there, I trust me. And if you want to reach out to me, again, you can reach out to me over social media. You can uh, fill out the form that I put in the comments, and uh, we can go from there. All right, thank you for watching. I will see you again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time. Take care. Bye.